Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. So, um, next project is again working on the J. Vance Planer Matcher long term project we've been having going on out here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture now for quite a while. We're getting close to being done, and uh, in my last video we made the pressure plate on the outfeed side that holds the board down as the uh, bottom is planed on the board. And we got all that machine that's back on the machine, it's ready to go, uh, except it needs uh, elevation screws. So, it needs two. Uh, threaded rods in either end that uh, will thread down into it. When you rotate these, they'll have a chain going between them to synchronize them so they both turn at the same time. Uh, but when you turn these, uh, it will raise and lower uh, that entire pressure plate. So I've got some three quarter inch stock here uh, that we've got cut to length uh, and it basically just needs to be threaded uh, on the bottom here uh, with a three quarter eight left hand thread. Now, three-quarter eight is an oddball size, and for those that have watched some of my older videos, this is a little bit of a rerun because we actually made some of these for uh, some other steps uh, previously. Uh, but the reason is is that when you crank the crank on there, for every rotation that you turn that, uh, you're going to raise or lower uh, the piece by an eighth of an inch. Uh, one rotation will be one eighth of an inch at eight threads per inch, uh, and that's just a fraction that particularly in woodworking machinery it's very common is, is uh, eights and quarters and so forth. So it just makes an easy adjustment. If you make a full revolution, you move it an eighth of an inch. If you move it a half a revolution, it's a sixteenth of an inch. Quarter a revolution is a thirty-second of an inch. Uh, so it's just a, a, that's the reason they went with that thread size. Fortunately, I was able to find a three-quarter eight left-hand tap, uh, believe it or not, on eBay of all places for dirt cheap, brand new one. Uh, and we were able to tap our parts out, uh, but of course uh, on, on these we're just going to have to thread these on the lathe. Now the reason that I'm shooting a separate video for this, because I've already shown this in an earlier video, uh, is because in my last videos I got a lot of questions from people as to why did I not use a steady rest on my lathe. The steady rest being a uh, one of these uh, that will put pressure so the rod will be coming through here and the cutter is coming in right here and you actually have pressure on the top and the back of that to hold it in place to keep it from flexing. So on, particularly on smaller diameter stuff, uh, you can actually make this bend uh, on the lathe and it makes it difficult to machine, particularly on longer pieces. Uh, well, the reason I did, wasn't using a steady rest is I didn't have one. Uh, so this is a steady rest uh, for this Lodge and Shipley uh, 16 inch Model X lathe. Now, actually, this one is off of an earlier uh, Lodge and Shipley lathe. I can't remember the exact model number, but uh, I think the Model X's were introduced in the sometime in the 1940s. But previous to that, Lodge and Shipley was making a very similar lathe, uh, with the exception of the headstock, the gearing in the headstock. And uh, the, as far as the carriage goes, uh, all that I think it was more or less identical. Uh, but they upgraded to a slightly different gearbox design in the headstock. Uh, well. A friend of mine, Ben Shank, uh, Ben is uh, actually someone I've known for quite a few years now, uh, mostly through the old woodworking machines forum, OWWM.com, uh, but also through my YouTube channel. Uh, ben lives up in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, and he happens to have one of the earlier uh, Lodge and Shipley lathes, 16 inch, same size as what I have. Ben came down a couple of weeks ago and we did our little event down here in Tifton, uh, restoring the table saw for the museum. And uh, we got to talking and he says, yeah, I've got the steady rest and I'm pretty sure it'll fit this lathe. Well, he mailed it to me in the mail. Uh, he's letting me borrow it, actually. Uh, he mailed it to me in the mail and uh, it looks like everything's going to fit. I haven't actually put it on the machine yet, but it looks like it's going to work and we'll show that going on here in just a little bit. So I'm going to use it for this job and I'll show you guys how to use a, a steady rest or a follow rest, excuse me, is the correct name for this one, a follow rest because it follows along with the tool. Uh, steady rest being one that's stable. I've got steady rest, I don't have the follow rest. Uh, clarification. So anyway, we're going to use it, we're going to try it out, and assuming everything works, which I think it will, um, my plan is is that I'm going to actually send these castings off to Cattail Foundry that does some casting work for me and have some copies of the castings done and um, they'll send those back to me and I'll actually be able to make uh, a copy of this uh, to fit on my lathe. That's the plan. Uh, we're going to try it out. So let's go put the, the follow rest on the lathe and uh, we'll show you go through the process of doing some left hand threading. 
so so this piece just kind of fits back here onto the dovetailed ways um, and you bring it up and just clamp it down so um, there's a gib down here on the bottom of this uh, dovetail that just tightens up when you tighten up the screws over here let me change the angle all right maybe you can see this a little bit better now so this side is dovetailed in and this side is just uh milled square but there's a uh, dovetail gib uh down here and when you tighten these screws up it uh just tightens that the dovetail up on the bottom there and it basically just clamps this uh this piece in place so uh, i'm just going to do it thumb tight right now we'll uh get our piece of metal in here and uh figure out exactly where we need to place it start threading these uh, these uh, height adjustment screws now so as you can see I have the steady rest uh, mounted in here uh, giving pressure behind and on top of my cutter uh, my cutters in here is sticking out a little bit longer than I want to but that's just the way it's got to be uh, for the setup this should work my compound is set at uh, 30 degrees but it, because I'm doing left hand uh, it's tilted backwards from normal so it's coming in this direction rather than this direction. Uh, we always want to be cutting on the forward edge of that cutter as we're cutting across. So everything's ready to go. We're going to just uh, get it in there close, uh, make a scratch cut, make sure we're cutting eight threads per inch, and then we'll start uh, cutting these threads. And I'm going to zero my cross slide there. And we will engage. And that's enough for the tech. Eight threads per inch, and we're right on the money. make a mark right here all right we're gonna feed in nice good cut here and engage
we've got all our left hand threads cut now and uh, these uh, we're pretty much ready to to just finish up and I don't know that I'm going to show the rest of this so if you want to see how we did this uh, uh, you can go back and look at one of my older videos where I go through the whole process. Uh, but the main thing I want to do is illustrate the use of this follow rest. And this is a prime example of where a follow rest on a lathe uh, really comes in handy. Uh, when you're doing some threading or heavy cutting uh, and you just need something to back that cutter up. So this is, a, um, this is an attachment that this lathe has been needing for a while. Again, this one's not mine. Uh, I'm borrowing it, but uh, I, now that I've got it, I, I'm, we're going we're gonna to make one. So that will be a project you'll probably see down the road uh, once I get some castings back. Uh, we're going to have to get the, the advanced matcher project finished up before I start on this. But uh, anyways, at some time in the near future, maybe we'll get a chance to go through the process of, of making a new follow rest uh, for this lodge and ship laid. So. That's about all we're going to do on this video. Uh, I think this will be a fairly short one. Uh, again, I'm going to be traveling uh, this, this coming week, so uh, may not have a video next week. We'll just have to see if maybe I can get something squeezed in. I don't know, uh, but I am going to be away for a while. Uh, one quick note, though, uh, on Wednesday of this week, so that would have been July 2nd, maybe. Anyway, uh, yesterday, as, as I'm filming this, we hit the 10,000 mark on subscribers on my channel, so uh, you know we we might just have to throw us a little party uh, at the Rucker House uh, this weekend for the 4th of July, uh, which is when this is being filmed, uh, 4th of July 2012, or actually the day is July 3rd. Uh, but anyway, we we hit that milestone. That's been something we've been been trying to get to for a while now. It took me about 10 months, I think, uh, on YouTube to get 10,000 subscribers. Uh, which I think is pretty darn good and uh, we'll look forward to having more subscribers in the future and uh, if you're not a subscriber to my channel I would encourage you to to hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll try to keep this uh, content coming to you uh, as much as we can so we'll sign off now and uh, thank you everybody out there for for watching uh, thank you to my subscribers and thank you for your many comments